And I don't want you to forget that we are in the hurricane season. And because sometimes for years we don't experience any major hurricane, we start to say, oh, cho, we're not going to get any hurricanes. But the truth is, we remain a vulnerable nation, so you have to always be prepared, always be on the guard. That's right. And if you've been following our Met Office or National Hurricane Center, you would have seen that the Atlantic Basin is showing much development. So let's be prepared because prevention is better than cure. Hi there, everyone. I'm Adrian Atkinson, and you're inside this Sunday's edition of Jamaica Magazine. The show promises to be a good one. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. On Get the Facts this week, learn how the Registrar General's Department, RGD, is ramping up its services to better meet your needs. Welcome to Get the Facts. This is the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm Theodore Henry. The Registrar General's Department, RGD, is modernizing its operations to provide a more efficient service to customers and a productive environment for its staff. One era of the retooling involves shifting services to their online platform. And sharing more on this process is Chief Executive Officer Charlton McFarlane. Welcome to the program, Mr. McFarlane. Thank you, Theodore. All right, let's jump right into the facts. Now, I know we mentioned online, but I wanted to talk a bit more generally about the transformations that have happened at the RGD over the years. Okay, then. Well, let's put it in some context. Eh? Yes, please. Um, so the RGD was established officially in 1879. That's how many years? That's 143 years Aye. or thereabouts. All right. right? And um, clearly, you, you know, we would have many of the technological platforms that we have now, obviously, would not have been around right, back then. Right, right, right. But the RGD would have worked assiduously to improve its business processes, mm -hmm. strengthen along the way, right? And um, some of the, the <coughs> critical improvements that are innovations that we would have um, looked at would have been where in 2000, the year 2001, right. I believe, we introduced our computer-generated certificate. Mm -hmm. And that now is what most Jamaicans refer to as the blue, the yeah. blue certificate. Right. Right. And, and that would have replaced what most Jamaicans refer to as the black and white certificate. I don't know that one right? at all. You shouldn't. You're, you're, you're a young man. <laughs> right. Um, but the, 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 one of the the issues with the black and white certificate was that it was just a piece of paper that was written on in pen. By hand. By hand, yes. right? And um, as such, persons could go and, you know, you adjust and you change an A to an O, you change a U to an E, and, and, and suddenly um, Hubert becomes Herbert. Mm. You know what I mean? Less right. resilient to moisture as well. And e exactly. Like right? And stuff. So, we, with the introduction of the computer-generated certificate, it... It, it, it introduced security paper, right, which is what our certificates are printed on now with um, specific features, specific um, standards. Right. You know, standards um, <clears throat> consistent with first world requirements, quite frankly, um, and stuff. So that would have reduced significantly our, our, our susceptibility to, to fraud. Right. Right. And stuff. So we are very proud of that. Um, other achievements, that uh, uh, other innovations, rather, that we would have pursued would have been the introduction, I believe, in about 2006, are there about, mm -hmm. um, the online application tracking system where, you know, we, we mirrored our product of, of, you know, the FedEx and the DHL uh -huh. of this world, right, where once an application is generated, a tracking number is generated with it, and that tracking number follows the application process through mm -hmm. from, from stage beginning to stage end. Uh, let me jump in here. I, I can see the obvious benefits for me, the consumer, yeah. but how did this assist in the working environment inside the RGD, this but tracking it had, system? It, it had several benefits because what it did was it allowed us to isolate each step of our business process. Oh, right? And by right. isolating each step of our business process, we could zero in on where we were less, e less efficient. Mm -hmm. Right? So, for example, if we realized that a record would have taken three or four days to be pulled from the vault, 
right? And with, with every other stage in the process, right, it was right. being done on time. Then we know that an intervention in the vault would have been needed, ah, right? Ah, so um, the information that it generated, the, 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 the analytics that it generated for us also assisted us in becoming much more efficient at what we do. I know you're a statistics man, so we can say that it, the, the, the process of doing business with the RGD has increased in speed and efficiency? It has. It has. And um, another um, innovation that, that we would have had is to commence the digitization of our records. Right, right. right? No, no, this is, is, is a major one. So in 2014, we started with 12 computers in a small room yes. where we began the process of scanning and indexing our paper records. Right. right? And so far, we are now at about 35% of our records being which is, digitized. Which is not surprising considering a hundred and... Exactly. Well, yes. we, we have upwards of seven million records in our, in, in our repository. You've been around right? for a while. Exactly. Uh, and, but this process has now gotten a significant kickstart, mm -hmm. again, through the National Ident Identification Systems Project. Right. We are just about a month ago, or thereabouts, the Prime Minister would have signed a massive um, deal to digitize on a large scale our records. And what does that mean now, Theodore? It means that when someone comes in to apply for a certificate, right, if that certificate is not already amongst what was already digitized, mm -hmm. it would mean that it would have to go to the vault and we would have to do a manual search. Right, right. Now, when all the records are digitized, that manual search becomes a computer search and that computer search becomes a search that will take a matter of seconds. It's data at okay. the fingertips. Absolutely. You know, and so and, and that's what we're all about at the RGD. Really and truly, my job at the RGD is to provide an is is to create an agency right. ra rather that is highly efficient right. and really and truly customers when they come in they can be in and out in a flash because we understand i mean our customers are busy they right. don't want right. to stand in line at the rgd for the entire day right and, and and we don't want them to stand in line at the rgd for the en entire day right we want them to be in and out in a flash Totally understood. And if I if I am interpreting what you're saying correctly, most of your services are now online. Uh, um, yeah, a, a, la, a significant um, portion of our services are now online. And I'll tell you something: the the RGD would have started years ago. Don't ask me exactly when. That's right. right? Um, but where customers could apply for the birth certificate, the marriage and death certificate, those standard services. online, online, right? right. This was. I said they don't quote, but I think it was around 2003, 2004, right. based on what I've read. Right, right. right? Um, I was in, in school at that time, <laughs> right? But beyond that, um, and, and especially with the onset of COVID, it forced us mm -hmm. to increase exponentially the rate at which we you know, embrace this digital transformation. Right, right. right, right. And so since February 2020, incidentally, at the same time that I took up office as the CEO, we would have increased our online products and services by 130%. And right. we're very proud of that. All right. I, 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 the conversation is interesting, but we're going to have to take a break right now. The, 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 this conversation continues on the other side of this break. You don't want to go anywhere. We're talking with Mr. McFarlane, the Chief Executive Office of the RGD. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We are continuing our conversation with Chief Executive Officer of the RGD, Charlton McFarlane, as we discuss the department's retooling to help the ease of doing business. Mr. McFarlane, before the break, we were talking about the services, yeah. many of which are now online. Absolutely. I want you to tell us what some of the services are. Okay, then. So, the services that we would have focused on to place online right. would be, you know, along the lines of our core services. So in addition to just birth, deaths, and marriage applications, mm -hmm. persons can now apply to correct an error online. Hubert versus Herbert. Exactly. Right. They can apply to add a name, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. because sometimes you know a, a child was registered but not fully named right, right? So maybe father wasn't there or Precisely. Oh, okay right and they can also apply to add the, fa the father's particulars online understood right and, and and all of this really means that the, the forms are downloadable so you go on our website you download the forms you fill them out you have them notarized and then you go back online and you upload those forms right and after you upload those forms you you make your payment online so mm -hmm. everything is done online um, unless there is a query with with something not being you know clearly indicated on the form right. um, literally the next call you'll get or the only call you'll get from the RGD besides the message confirming that the application was successfully submitted is the call to come and pick up your documents right, right? so um, so we would have focus on our core services however we have also added additional online services so right now mm -hmm. persons can apply for the adoption certificates online oh, that that was added right. two months ago the end of march i believe right new new service new new service mm -hmm. and also persons can do online searches now how the online search works is that again leveraging the strength of our digitized database right there are persons who want to simply apply for a birth certificate right. but in order to apply online for a birth certificate they need the entry number and they would have to request that entry number. Now they can search for the entry number online and once that entry number corresponds to a digitized record, right. that search result is returned in real time. So you literally mean database when you say database, connected information, Precisely. not just limited to one particular view. Precisely, right. Another service that we added online is the issuance of our electronic burial order, right. Now this was actually the very first of the new online services um, right. that, 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 that I um, oversaw at the RGD. And it came in the time when COVID was right there, mm -hmm. right? So the, the, the electronic burial order is, is essentially a process where a, a death occurs at the hospital mm -hmm. and the relative does, is not required to come in to the, the to hospital. To the RGD, right? No, they, they are not required to come. Yeah, they are not required to come to the RGD to right. apply for the burial order, I see. right? Um, I see. Essentially, the record is passed on from the medical records office at the hospital to our registration officers. And remember, this is another spin-off from mm. the bedside registration where our officers are physically at these institutions, Understood. right? So the record goes directly to our staff. We generate the burial order and we contact the customer, send them the reference number, and then that customer goes online enters the necessary credentials right. and the burial order pops up. It sounds as if efficiency is a big deal for the RGD today. I'm an economist, so <laughs> you know, that, that, that's, that's always the focus. So, 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 so give, me some, give me some statistics, some numbers here. What has, what has been the take-up like? All right, so I can tell you, um, our, electronic, our online services, um, especially post-COVID, right. um, has increased exponentially. Um, as a matter of fact, the, the, the record updating services, which is just the general grouping for our correction of error, addition of father's particulars, right. those services have seen an almost 35% increase, or not increase rather, not, not increase, let me be very, very, very clear, All right. shift, shift in terms of um, in-house application versus online application. Ah. All right? So we have seen that 30% shift towards online. And it, it is something that's welcomed, um, extremely welcomed by persons who live outside of Jamaica. Right. That has always right. been an issue. Exactly. Yes. You know, so I, I believe we would have provided the greatest benefit in this regard mm -hmm. to those persons because those persons would complain all the time. It would cost them additional money right. to, 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 have to make those applications, um, you know, prior to, to, to having the online services. You know, that we're talking about persons outside Jamaica, but I've also heard this complaint for persons outside, you know, places where the office is readily accessible. Absolutely. You know, I need to journey here, I need to journey there. Yeah. No, it's just yeah. on my phone. You know? And um, yeah, one last thing I'll say is um, just recently again, we would have, you know, I, I'm happy to be able to speak about recent things, eh? Yes. <laughs> just recently, we would have um, created an app now 
on our website mm -hmm. where um, persons who want to get married at the RGD, because yes, Theodore, persons, we do have a registered wedding product. Right, right. right. Uh, um, where persons come in, they want an, an effect, efficient, low cost wedding, they can apply online, as in set their appointment right. online. So literally, they book the appointment online, they upload the supporting documents and the, and they pay online and mm -hmm. all they need to do is come to the RGD, sure. say their I do's and go on to happily ever after. Wait, they say I do I do's at the office? When they get in my day. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. Now, I, I know we're focusing on your online services, but I just want to take this time mm. to remind all of you as what are the core uh, services, um, and perhaps services is not what I want to say, the core functions of the RGD. Why does the RGD exist? Uh, the RGD exists to keep our vital records safe, right? Um, the vital records really is, by definition, your birth, your marriage, your death, stillbirths, adoptions, right? right? Um, we are working with the Supreme Court to see how we manage the divorce records as well, uh, right? Okay. Because that is another um, vital record. Mm -hmm. So the RGD, we are the ones that collect it. We are supposed to collect it accurately and completely. Right. And then we are the ones that keep it and maintain it, right? Um, so we, we, right now, we have, in terms of physical records, upwards of 7 million records dating back to the 1600s, right? right? right, right. Um, we are pivoting now. To, 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 to have those records stored in digital format, right? So that would, would, would reduce the burden of having the physical space, right. right? Because by law, we have to keep the records in two forms, original and duplicates. So if, if I can just jump in here, essentially, the keepers of the present and the past of the yeah. Jamaican people. Absolutely. But, but we're out of time, but I want you to take a moment and speak to our audience about the RGD, about what is available to them, 20 seconds or so, okay. speak to our audience. All right, so again, the RGD, we, we, we are constantly trying to see how we can become more efficient and serve our customers. We are pivoting towards online services and, and, and by doing so, you know, it would improve convenience for our customers. Um, the RGD also believes that it is important that customers are able to communicate with us. And so now, today, more than at any other time in the past, there are more avenues through which persons can, can speak to an RGD agent. We have our social media handles on Instagram, Twitter, and, and um, Facebook. We also have a YouTube channel. We have a live web chat. So you log on to our website and the live web chat uh, uh, icon pops up and you can engage with, with um, an RGD representative. We also have dedicated WhatsApp lines and all of this complements our phone lines already. And of course, our info at rgd.gov.jm. We invite you to engage with us. Thank you so much, Mr. McFarlane. We have been getting the facts on the RGD, on their online services, on the transformation that is happening in the office of the keepers of the Jamaican people's identity. For more information on the products and the services of the Registrar General's Department, you can visit their website, rgd.gov.jm. Not just information, as you've heard in this conversation, you can do a lot of the business that you do with the RGD on that website. This has been Get the Facts. Our guest has been the Chief Executive Office of the Registrar General's Department, Charlton McFarlane. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Theodore Henry. Take good care. Our roadways have been plagued with fatalities due to road crashes, many of which could be avoided. In this next feature, the echoing call for citizens to play their part. We have a disaster that is of real concern. A man-made disaster which is out of indiscipline, ignorance, and disregard for the rules of the country. We are paying a severe price for this level of indiscipline that has taken over our roads. We are losing lives, young men, and right around the country, we are seeing 
this increase in fatalities and accidents on our roads. And I believe that as a country, we need to recognize what is happening. There are a number of things that we can do. I heard a gentleman said that he was encouraging persons not to take a taxi that has more than the required amount of passengers. And he said that he was lamblasted. People cuss him out. There are things that we can do by not supporting the indiscipline of some of our drivers. And some of the same passengers will say to the driver, where you do go around and a man, you know, say the man, they are going to leave you. And I believe this is something that as Jamaicans, we need to pay serious attention to. And it's not what the government is doing. Government alone can't do it. We need the support of every single Jamaica. When the new road traffic act comes into effect, I'm hoping that I won't hear people saying that is only poor people the law was made for. Many who have died on our roads are not poor. Let us not get carried away. Let us not be overcome by the culture of earning a dollar. So a taxi man would drive on the wrong side of the road with a car full of passengers, including children, with no regards at all for the lives of those persons. In the same way in which we use social media and other forms of information to be critical and raise concerns about issues let us start a campaign in this country about the carnage on our roads and what we as jamaicans can do and is prepared to do Today we meet an educator, a true pioneer in her field, and learn how she has been contributing to Jamaica's educational development. Good morning. Hi, Dr. Chu. How are you doing? I am fine, thank you. Please I see that you are fine. I see that you are fine. I am fine. headed out though. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we head out, we head out with you okay. so you can get ready and we definitely will just be having a, a quick chat. All right. So, so just give me a minute. Go. I'll go and get my stuff. You know what happened? I'll be following you. All, All right. right. No problem. I'll come with you. <laughs> Dr. Chu, I know that everybody starts their day in a, in a particular way. Yes. What would you say are your morning rituals, your, the things that you must do? I'm an early bird. I get up early every morning by 5 o'clock I am up and I listen to my morning inspiration. So I turn on my phone to um, Nationwide and get the morning spiritual inspiration. And then most times, not all the times, I go jogging with my husband to get my exercise in. Tell us, what do you do? Education is really about life, living, and my task really is to ensure we operate a smooth, effective education system that will enable our boys and girls to be their best selves. I have the best job in the world, but the most difficult. Tell me the most difficult decision you've had to make this week, and you could probably share what the decision was. Wow, I make tough decisions every day, especially when it comes down to resources making the best use of resources for our country now just yesterday we have 
been meeting with the World Bank because we're looking at an education mission. And we have to decide on how to utilize the limited resources to treat with some capacity building for our teachers. Now, you know that the education system cannot surpass the quality of its teachers, but we have teachers in service and we have teachers who are considered pre-service. Now, I've had to make the decision with respect to who gets the resources. Do we improve the teachers who are being trained or do we treat with those teachers who are currently in service? Now, that was most difficult because both categories of teachers are important to the transformation. Dr. Chu, there are different things that inspire individuals. Who or what has inspired you lately? You know, I'm really inspired by those with whom I work with and those that I serve. When the students do well in their areas of talent, when I watch the Boys and Girls Championship, when I watch the scholarship ceremonies, when I watch the students in their dance form and their art forms, that really and truly inspires me. What is Dr. Troop's legacy in the public sector? What would that be? What does that sound like? What does that look like? Wow, that's a big one. Really, what I would love to know at the end of my tenure as a leader, that all our educational institutions are performing about satisfactory. No, that's a difficult task, but it is not impossible. Right now, I have 243 schools that are deemed unsatisfactory, and I am committed to seeing those schools move to satisfactory and then take them to good and excellent. That's the legacy I want to leave because that means students are getting the best education program possible and getting the opportunity to become the best persons that they can be. I'm, I'm sure with, with the demands of your job, you travel different places, you go different places. What's the most interesting place that your job has taken you to? Mm. You know, I've been to China and I've looked at the education system as part of a study tour. And what was most impressive for me is the discipline of the students. Now, I got a chance to see the teachers moving away from the classroom into a planning session and the students moved into self-directed learning. I'm really hoping for the day that we can see that happening in Jamaica where our students can take self-directed learning to another level. That is going to be very, very important to maximizing and learning time and extending the learning support that our boys and girls need to become their best selves. So that's, that's something that I found interesting and I'm moving for that to be a part of Jamaica's education system. Can you say anything in Chinese? Xie xie. It means thank you. I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing I could say over there. <laughs> Recommend one book that you'd want everyone to read. Well, you know, when I got the opportunity to lead the sector at this level, I figured I needed to improve in my leadership. So John C. Maxwell is one of my favorites. And so how to lead successfully the five levels of leadership. That's a book that I'm reading. Now, to be honest with you, I don't get the chance to do it as much as I want, but I get to put in a few pages each night to examine my own style of leadership and how I can become better. Because to move this system is not about your positional power. It's really about the influence and how persons believe in your capacity to deliver and what that does for them. That's very important and that's part of the levels of leadership that I'm taking myself on. And I will recommend that as a good book for any leader because the truth is everything falls and rises on leadership. Dr. Chu, this is where we say have a great day and as you learned, share, share. <laughs> Thank you too. And I'm late for my meeting. Bye. <laughs>That's all the time we have left today on this show. Do join us again tomorrow on the same station for another exciting installment of Jamaica Magazine. To re-watch today's offering or other content like this, visit our website, jis.gov.jm. From all of us here at the GIS, have yourself a wonderful Sunday. I'm Adrian Atkinson. See you next time.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.